Okay, so for this program, we are simulating an elevator that will skip the 13th floor and it will check for input errors. So this is about validating your input um, for kind of a simple program, but it's very useful. <clears throat> so, all right, so we imported the scanner library and created an object in this from the scanner class. All right, now what we're going to do is get the user input. So system dot out dot print floor. <clears throat> so now you want if in dot has next int. All right. So basically, it's saying. Uh, whatever the user enters, if it has an integer in it, the first number they enter, then you will run this code. But you have to know that the user entered an integer, right? So then we can say int floor equals in dot next int. So here's where you actually store their input into a variable. Here you're just checking. So it's stored if floor equals 13, then system dot out print line error. No 13th floor because we're superstitious. Right? Else if uh, floor is less than or equal to zero or floor is greater than 20, just assuming this is like a 20, 24 hotel, then system dot out print line error. The floor must be between one and 20. So we're just ruling out different scenarios here. Uh, there's no 13th floor. There's no floor that's more than 20 or less than zero. Okay else all right so once you're in this um, this clause now you know what they've entered is a valid number all right so we've established that the user has entered an integer and we've stored the integer into the variable floor we've established that um, if we made it to this far then we've established that floor isn't uh, isn't 13 and that it's between 1 and 20. And so now we can do uh, int actual floor equals floor. And if floor is greater than 13, then actual floor equals floor minus 1. OK. Because they call it the uh, 13th floor the 14th floor, but it's really the 13th floor. Um, and then we can do system dot out dot print line. The elevator will travel to the actual floor and then plus actual floor. So that's pretty easy. And yeah, that's wrapped up in that else statement. So what's left to do? Uh, okay, we actually have to think about going back here at the top. This is all assuming that the user entered an integer, right? And this is where it's closing out. Uh, so we need an else statement here. If they entered a double or a string, like there's no 1.5 floor elevator, or uh, you can't enter a name for it in a string, so we can say in that case uh, system dot out dot print line error not an integer okay so don't forget the semicolon and we can run that enter floor four the elevator ah typo actual floor okay let's try it again for 
the elevator will travel to the actual floor four. Okay, that makes sense because it's an integer, it's between one and 20, and it's below 13. Uh, let's try 14. The elevator will travel to the actual floor 13. Okay, 14 is actually 13. Uh, let's test some different situations. Let's say I wanted to go to floor 1.5. That's not an integer, it's a double. So our program caught this error. Great. Now let's run it again. Let's try to enter floor three. Not an integer. You can't type the name or else this will run. Okay. So it has to go through here and then pass all of these clauses, right? Let's try to run uh, floor 25. Error, the floor must be between one and 20, right? 